We question our daily position Seeking answers and definitions Get the queries off your chest With Ahkam SOS Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS the live show that discusses Islamic duties and practices. MashaAllah, we'll be having loads and loads of your questions coming in. And if you'd like to send in a question, here on Ahkam SOS, send it via the WhatsApp, send it via the email address, which is Ahkam SOS at imamhussein.tv. Or alternatively, give us a call here in the studio on 0203 515 And inshallah, me and the chef will be able to take and discuss your question. I'm your host for this evening, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Excellent, excellent. Shaykhna, um, it occurred to me that there are instances when wudu is actually haram on you to do. For example, when there's not enough time for you to perform the wudu and the salah wa qada. But what happens if I do the wudu anyway? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين um, If someone let's say wakes up late in the early morning for Fajr prayer and let's say he's got only three minutes to sunrise and of course for the one be able to do wudu Three minutes wouldn't be enough for some people or for many people because three minutes until you have the wudu and you start the salah, almost the salah would be outside the time of uh, the actual time by, by you know, the sunrise. So uh, if somebody was stubborn to do the wudu, you know, I don't, I don't believe in, let's say, he doesn't, he's not happy with the tayammum as a method of uh, a purification also it's, it's mentioned you know that uh, you can use the as a means of uh, uh, secondary ablution uh, instead of although um, but let's say somebody wanted to do the uh, uh, and they are in, uh, let's say the type of fast pace fast paced individuals who can quickly do the wudu in 30 seconds correctly of course and offer the salah as well quickly in three minutes um, of course, it's a, it's a risky uh, matter because you, uh, you might cause the salah to be uh, performed outside the time. Anyhow, um, if the intention of this individual was for the purpose of discharging his duty uh, with, uh, with the wudu for this particular salah, that I do this wudu for this particular salah, then this uh, salah um, would not be accepted. Um, basically, the wudu would be uh, void, batal, mm. When the wudu is batal, the salah is batal as well. Okay, wow. Because he made the intention of doing the wudu for the salah, which should be, uh, instead of the wudu, should be a tamu, not wudu. But if the intention was قربت الله تعالى that I do this wudu although the time is uh, sh very short almost to the sunrise for example but I do it قربت الله تعالى seeking nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal and I do the, the wudu very quickly and I do the salah quickly as well in, in a way that by the time I say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah then the sun, the sun is uh, rising in, in, in this few yeah. seconds in this case, the salah is valid and the wudu is valid as well. Mm. Although he committed a sin. Okay. Because his duty, uh, his wajib was to perform tayammum. Yes. Your, your duty now is to do tayammum, not wudu. Because the, the time is too short. But you risk, you risk the issue. And you actually, of course, did the salah and the wudu in time. But you shouldn't do this. Uh, and you have to f abide with the... Uh, Sharia rules in this case. You, know, you can't just say, you know, I'm not happy with uh, with the tamum. I'm not really confident with the tamum. I feel wudu is better. You have to follow uh, the Sharia law yes. in this case. Excellent, Sheikhna. 
istikhara, akhira, you know, when we are in a, well, we're told that when we cannot make a decision, that's when you, so when you take out istikhara. You know, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you and guide you with your decision making. You know, is it compulsory that it is only at a point where we cannot make a decision? Or can we take out, you know, istikhara for, you know, any circumstance? Istikhara is mainly for the times of hesitation and indecision. Okay. When you are in the middle of the way, uh, you're not sure what to do. Shall I travel next week or not? I'm not sure. You know, I've got work, I've got things to do. I'm in total hesitation. You know, I, I can't make the decision myself. So you ask Allah Azza wa Jal, um, Allah's advice in the Holy Quran, let's say, or by Tasbih, for example. Mm -hmm. If the istikhara is good, then of course you're allowed to, you, you can actually uh, uh, do the uh, according to the istikhara. Or if it's bad, then you have to uh, refrain from this act um, just in case that it could be a consequence if you do the opposite. I remember a family who did istikhara for the marriage uh, proposal and the istikhara was bad, but they went and uh, they actually implemented the marriage contract. And after I think one or two months, uh, they divorced. Oh. Uh, so you have to be careful with this issue. That when you take the istikhara, the advice of Allah Azza wa Jal, make sure you implement it, apply it. Mm -hmm. And if it's bad, avoid it. But it's not something, how can I, how can I say, it's not something wajib, you have to do it. <laughs> it's not an obligation that you have to do it mm. and you have to refrain from it. Well, it's for your benefit Asad. that if it's good, you try to implement it. If it's bad, you avoid it. Asad. I think the main thing is that, you know, you take it in times like of hesitation when, when you're indecisive <coughs> rather than taking, you know, what we say in English, willy nilly, you know, istikharas and, and so forth. Asad. Sheikhna, what is the limit and the scope in terms of interaction uh, with reverts when it's with, you know, non-Muslims, kitabi and non-kitabi. I mean, do you have any advice? I believe His Eminence Sayyid, uh, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani, Hafadullah, he discusses uh, this topic uh, in, in some detail. Um, yes, His Eminence mentions that um, um, this individual who became Muslim must keep a good relation with his parents, with his sisters and, and brothers and um, try to use uh, the best of akhlaq that uh, Ahlul Bayt salam, and the Holy Prophet wala, have, taught, have implemented in their lives and taught the Muslims to do so to actually uh, apply it in his life with his non-Muslim parents and relatives that may Allah Azza wa Jal guide them through his akhlaq, his good akhlaq towards the Islam as well and they join uh, this arc of uh, salvation and guidance inshallah Inshallah. Sheikhna, is it permissible to take um, the wetness and water from the bed whilst performing wudu, um, you know, rather than taking additional water, especially when it's from uh, away from the face where you know the wudu, the wudu boundaries of the face are? Um, yes, you're allowed uh, when, let's say, your hand dries um, for wiping your head or, or uh, both feet, then you can take from the bed or moustache mm -hmm. um, as well, um, just to make sure that you have wetness for wiping your head and both feet. So does that go for the arms as well? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, when you, you do the arm, you can grab water from and do the arm and stuff so forth. The arms should be washed. The face okay. and arms should be washed. Mm -hmm. Wash your face and arms. So okay. you have to wash them. Ah, Not for wiping. Okay, okay, okay. So it's only for the wiping. Wiping. Yeah. If your hands are, are dry, you may access some water exactly. from your bed. Wiping. Uh, for for the masa. Ah, Okay, yeah. okay. Interesting. Sheikh, what about when we have products in our hair, especially oil? Where I come from, it's very famous that you know Pakistanis, Indians, so forth. They put oil in their hair uh, for for nutrients and nourishment and so forth. Um, doing the masa, are we allowed to do masa on you know? parts of, of the hair that has oil in it? If this oil is dense and there's a density, there's a, uh, some kind of waterproof mm -hmm. type of gel or, or oil and such like, then you have to make sure that you remove this um, excessive 
oil and, and gel, and then you wa wipe it on your head uh, without any prevention of any particle, not necessarily to be oil, anything that prevents the reach of uh, the hand, wet hand, on your hair, then you have to make sure you remove it, and then you do the wipe. Okay, so any product in your hair, whether it's gel, wax, oil, or so forth, if it is waterproof and it prevents the water particles reaching the hair, exactly, yeah. um, not even the scalp, the hair, yeah, then um, it has to be removed before you do wudu, and then it's acceptable. Yes. What if? Okay. Yes. So what if, Sheikh, if I uh, put some product in my hair, but I leave the back area or something dry? Can you do it there, no? No, uh, you have to wipe in the front of your head, just okay, the just before part. the just before the head, uh, the forehead. Oh. Um, this area in the in the middle okay, so right should here, be wiped exactly. Yeah. Okay. All this, this area. Well, so if I apply product, but I leave some space, yeah, that should be dry fine. area. Should be I fine. could that that be okay. I could use yes. that. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Sheikh, yeah. according to one of our viewers, <laughs> they've asked. Um, in regards to viewing a girl with the intention of marriage, is this okay, Islamically speaking, especially if they want to get an idea of what they look like, maybe even you know uh, the, the way they look physically in terms of their, their body and so forth? Uh, because maybe this can be, you know, some gentlemen, even females as well, they may find it discouraging, you know, they may not find it attractive. Um, so is it permissible for them to actually view uh, a, a spouse in this way? Well, if there is a likelihood um, that this individual marries this girl, for example, then yes, he's allowed to look just once <coughs> and without lust to look at the, uh, uh, this uh, female okay. individual. Shaykh, according to his eminence, the <coughs> Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani, um, is it permissible um, in regards to <coughs> the meat and the hide of an animal to be sold um, you know by Muslims and you know even when it's like you know ver ritually slaughtered properly when we do the dhabiha um, is it okay for us to sell the skin of the animal and the meat? If this hide or this meat was um, slaughtered by the Muslims then there's no issue with it Okay. unless you have a proof that it says they have Perform the uh, the slaughtering in a wrong way, okay. which makes the meat haram and najis. I see. I see. So if you, even if you don't know, you need confirmation. You need yakin that you know it was not done by a non-Muslim. No, if it's if it's done by a Muslim, then it's halal. Okay. There's no issue with it because uh -huh. the hands of the Muslim okay. can be taken okay. um, as a evidence or proof of okay. being halal. I see. But the non-Muslim, of course, you have to make sure that ah. if it's a non-Muslim, then you can't use it Obviously. because the Muslim should be the one yes. who is slaughtering and saying Bismillah. Yes. That's the condition, being a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Sheikh. We're going to go to a short break now. Inshallah, join us after the break as we continue discussing here on Ahkam SOS. I'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykhna. Assalamu alaikum. Shaykhna, my next question is in regards to ghusl. If one was to perform ghusl and later on they discover that, oh, I actually didn't you know, wash a certain part of my body, uh, what is one to do in that situation? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If this unwashed part was in the left side of the body, then the one can only wash that <coughs> unwashed part, okay. and that's it. The, the ghusl is sahih and valid. Complete. But if the uh, unwashed part was on the right side, mm -hmm. um, you wash that unwashed uh, area, and then you have to do to the, the left side, uh, left side the whole web. Left ah, side, yeah. Okay. But that's according to uh, mustahab precaution, which okay. is not wajib. Okay. Um, then you can wash the left side as well, if you wish, because it's mustahab. Sheikh, when it comes to eating, what are the etiquettes in regards to eating? <clears throat> in terms of eating, to eat excessively, يعني, in other words, to eat so much in a way of overeating, when you are full up, but you still want to eat, 
okay. some people like to just fill their stomach or they are now full up you know, in terms of eating and drinking um, we have a hadith from Imam Abi Ja'far al-Baqir alayhi salam with this regard he says ma min shay'in abghadu ila Allah azza wa jal min batanin mamlu' there's nothing more detest in the sight of Allah azza wa jal than a full stomach Allah Azza wa would not be pleased with such act for the one who, you know, fills his stomach over the uh, accepted amount and the required amount. And of course, this will create, uh, in a bad mood, arrogancy and other bad features and akhlaq as well. Um, another hadith on Abi Abdullah al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, Kullu da'in min al-tukhamah. إلا الحمى فإنها ترد ورودا. All the illnesses is because of the overeating, you know, the excessive eating, except the fever, in which it comes, it penetrates to the body. And this gives us an idea that the fever comes not from the because of eating. It's from outside. I mean, I'm sure the the current virus has been spread. One of this one of the signs is fever. Yeah, that's correct. So a virus comes out from, I don't know, mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. and causes fever mm -hmm. as one of the signs. Yes, yeah, respiratory. It's, it's breathed in rather well. Exactly. As the hadith states that others were to do with digestion of food. Shekhna, a question came in uh, from an email address and it says, Assalamu alaikum. While I was cooking rice, I found something in the rice. I had doubt that it could be mouse droppings or something else. What is the ruling about this cooked food from His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah, Sheikh Wahid Khurasani, Hafadullah? Sheikh Wahid Khurasani, what does he say when we find something in, in our food, in, in the cooked rice in this instance? Uh, the person here is not sure, has doubt, it could be uh, mouse droppings or something, um, and you know, in, the, in the rice or whatever, and then when they put it into the, into the pot, they didn't, didn't see it, they've just noticed it. So what, what is to be done here? Well, he says that if you have doubt that if, if this, uh, um, let's say, black looking like seed or something like that, if you have doubt that if it's a mouse drop or mm -hmm. something else, then this food is deemed to be uh, pure and tahir okay. for consumption. Because everything is halal, is tahir, okay. unless you're okay. certain. Mm -hmm. There's no certainty here, yes. then everything is halal and tahir. If there's certainty, then of course, you have to avoid it. It's haram oh, to eat. Oh, and najis food, of course. Shaykhna, you know, our religion is a very, very compassionate religion, especially to animals. We, you know, we give a lot of rights to animals and so forth. But as you are aware, some animals are quite harmful. Some animals will attack us uh, to eat. Some animals are, you know, dirty and spread diseases and so forth. So animals that are harmful towards human beings, are we allowed to kill them? Well, if this type of animal is harmful and has no owner, it's two conditions, okay. to be harmful and has no owner, then you're allowed to kill it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So in terms of like, you know, the mice and rats that we have here in London, unfortunately, exactly, yeah. we're perfectly allowed to kill exactly. them and everything. Shaykh, I have a question here from the email as well. What do you say about the jinn? Is it, is it possible for them to appear before a human being in this day and age? Or is this the claim by some to have seen the jinn? Or is there, or is only in their imagination? No, of course, it is possible for the jinn to appear at any time. I know some people myself who have seen the, some of the uh, this type of creatures, to be honest. Uh, they've seen them. Um, there are people who have access mm -hmm. to, to them. They can communicate with them, see them, literally. And of course, the best and the strongest evidence is the Holy Quran. Yes. We have a full chapter of Surah Al-Jinn. No. I've got one, uh, an ayah from this Holy uh, Surah, uh, 72, uh, verse 6. rahim وَإِنَّهُ كَانَ رِجَالٌ مِنَ الْجِنِّ يعوذون برجال من الجن وأنه كان رجال من الإنس يعوذون برجال من الجن فزادوهم رهقا 
some individual humans used to seek power through some individual jinn, uh, but they only increased them in sins. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, the harmful way of dealing with jinn, which is not accepted, mm -hmm. which causes sin. Uh, Shaina, what is the ruling regarding learning to control the jinn for good causes, such as for curing the diseased? Yeah, if it doesn't cause any harm to the individual, then it's permissible. This is the good side or the good <laughs> usage of, uh, of the jinn. As I've said, some people that I know, they have seen them, they have uh, communicated with them, but for the good purposes. So, because there are mu'mineen of the jinn. Yes. There are believers, mu'mineen. Uh, amongst the jinn. And Surah Al-Jinn is very clear in this regard in the Holy Quran. Shaykh, now earlier you mentioned that uh, for meat to be halal, the, the person that is doing the slaughtering has to be a Muslim. In regards to fish, fish are not slaughtered. You know, the only condition is that it is alive in the water before you take it out. But the fishermen, does the fisherman or fisher lady, does she have to, do they have to be Muslim? For the fish, the hukum is more relaxed <coughs> with this regard compared to the meat and chicken. <coughs> so a non-Muslim can hunt the fish. Um, there's no slaughtering. There's no qibla required. The most important two, two conditions for, the, for, for eating fish. Number one should be the type of with the scales um, on the body of the fish. Yes. Number two, to be brought out by the human's hand. Okay. Or any tool that he controls. Okay. Nets, fishing Nets and so forth. Two main conditions. Mm. The rest are not really required. I see. <coughs> I see. Sheikhna, if one is traveling, and I'm assuming this is to do with um, uh, Qasr Salah, one is traveling but for a forbidden act, method and gambling, or you know, um, he's going to go somewhere to perform a sin or so forth, um, his Salah. How does he perform his salah? Is his salah valid or not on this travel? This is known as safar al ma'asiyah, mm -hmm. uh, a sinful travel. Mm -hmm. uh, such travel, traveling or holidays in which there is an intention of committing sins, let's say, you know, he's going to gamble, for example. Las Vegas. You know, sad, sadly, there are some Muslims who travel to uh, some areas of the world to commit sins specifically. Mm -hmm. Then this safar is safar al ma'asiyah. It's a sinful trouble mm -hmm. and trip. The one must perform his salah in full. Wow. There's no uh, concession <laughs> or discount uh -huh, uh -huh. with this regard. So there's no, uh, he's, no he's not a musafir, salat al musafir. He, he needs to pray in full. <clears throat> also, this is applied to um, a woman who. Um, Let's say she travels without the permission of her husband, of her husband. Um, oh, and okay. she needs to get the consent uh, from the husband that I want to go for holiday, for example, with my friends mm -hmm. or family members and so forth. If he wasn't uh, pleased with this, then she needs to complete her salah in her chapel as well. Again, the reason for this, uh, it's written in the, in the books of uh, Islamic books about why should a wife ask for permission to leave the house and, and, and other issues involved in marital relations that Islam is very clear that he wants to protect uh, the sanctity of this household, this, uh, you know, the husband and wife, the, um, uh, for the cause of chastity and the modesty and so forth, to protect this house from any kind of corruption. I see. Sheikhna, is it permissible for a uh, ma'moon to stand alone in a row? It's makruh for the ma'moon to stand <coughs> uh, in a row which is empty. So let's say he comes and he sees the, the line is full and he prays behind uh, those lines uh, by himself alone. Uh -huh. He tried to squeeze himself with the, with the jama'a line, that's better. I see. Shekhinah, thank you very much uh, for, you know, for your, your answers and your research. And thank you to all of you for joining us here on Ahkam SOS. <laughs> if you have a question you'd like to uh, send in, send it via the WhatsApp, send it via the email address, or alternatively give us a call here. Uh, and inshallah, we are more than happy to do the research and everything required in order to get your answer. If you follow a particular marja and you want you know, an answer from a particular marja, we will do our utmost best to speak to the official office 
and the official representatives of that marja in order to get your answer. No question is too silly or too taboo. Um, it's our duty to give you the actual answer and the Islamic ruling and the taklif for you to do. Uh, inshallah, join us again on Monday. We'll be have a brand new episode of Hakam SOS. Inshallah, we'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. We question our daily position, seeking answers and definitions. Get the queries of your chest with Ahkam SOS.